Tonight's debate comes on the 50th anniversary of the night that President Kennedy told the world that the Soviet Union had installed nuclear missiles in Cuba, perhaps the closest we've ever come to nuclear war. And it is a sobering reminder that every president faces at some point an unexpected threat to our national security from abroad. So let's begin. Uh, Governor, can I just ask you, would you go beyond what the administration would do? Like, for example, would you put in no-fly zones over Syria? This is a time, this should have been a time for American leadership. We should have taken a leading role, not militarily, but a leading role organizationally, governmentally, to bring together the parties there, to find responsible parties. As you hear from intelligence sources even today, the, 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 the insurgents are highly disparate. They haven't come together. They haven't formed a unity group, a, co a council of some kind. That needs to happen. American can help that happen. And we need to make sure they have the arms they need to carry out the, the very important role, which is getting rid of Assad. I hear opportunity, and when I hear opportunity, I hear the fact that we're going to back a new regime that's going to be better than the old regime, which is all about foreign aid, propping up uh, new dictatorships that are taking old, over from old dictatorships with consequences that have led to the United States being the uh, villain of the world. Uh, we need to stop picking winners and losers. We need to stop our military interventions. And we find ourselves in a situation where uh, we are the example on the hill. We need a strong national defense for this country. Defense is the operative word, not offense and not nation building. President Obama, you talk about nation building, and that's all you do. Would either of you be willing to declare that an attack on Israel is an attack on the United States, Mr. President? Well, first of all, Israel is a true friend. It is our greatest ally in the region. And if Israel is attacked, America will stand with Israel. I've made that clear throughout my presidency. So you're, you're saying I, we've already made that declaration. I will stand with Israel if they are attacked. Well, I don't think that that would be the case because I would, if I were president of the United States, I would be lobbying Israel to not uh, bomb Iran. I think that that would be a huge mistake. I think that uh, world sentiment would even be worse toward Israel than it is today. Uh, and that we monitor the situation and that there's all sorts of time available to deal with an issue that right now really doesn't have to be dealt with. And if anyone thinks that Iran is going to take a nuclear weapon and launch it against Israel, then the world needs to recognize that Iran, Iran will cease to exist because of the second strike capability that Israel has and would utilize. Uh, because you talked about it, uh, Pakistan and what needs to be done there. General Allen, our commander in Afghanistan, says that Americans continue to die at the hands of groups who are supported by Pakistan. We know that Pakistan has arrested the doctor who helped us catch Obama's uh, bin Laden. Uh, it still provides safe haven for terrorists, yet we continue to give Pakistan billions of dollars. Is it time for us to divorce Pakistan? No, it's not time to divorce uh, a nation uh, on earth that has uh, 100 nuclear weapons and is on the way to, to double that at some point. Uh, what message, Governor Romney, are you sending when you say that we can't back away from Pakistan because they have nuclear warheads? What you're saying to a country that doesn't have nuclear warheads is the only way for us as a country that doesn't have nuclear warheads to gain the United States respect is to have nuclear warheads. So you, you add to the pressure or the desire on the part of Iran to acquire nuclear weapons because of your stand uh, on Pakistan, which is to continue uh, to support a government that, uh, that is subversive to the United States on one hand and yet helpful on the other. Uh, but this is something that we're going to tolerate because they have nuclear weapons. The truth, though, is that Al Qaeda is much weaker than it was when I came into office, and they don't have the same capacities to attack the U.S. homeland and our allies as they did four years ago. Uh, President Obama's position on this, what is, his, what is your position on the use of drones? 
Well, I believe that we should use any and all means necessary to take out uh, people who pose a threat to us and our friends around the world. And uh, it's widely reported that drones are being used in drone strikes, and I support that entirely. Drones just don't take out the target intended. They take out innocent civilians. Innocent, innocent civilians die from these drone attacks. And as a result of these drone attacks, which is war by remote control, we're making ourselves hundreds of millions of enemies to this country. We're the scourge of the earth. We're not the savior for the earth. And right now, drone attacks have come to symbolize the United States and remote control warfare. We're making more enemies doing remote control warfare with drones. What do you believe is the greatest future threat to the national security of this country? Well, I think it will continue to be uh, terrorist networks. We have to remain vigilant, as I just said. Uh, but with respect to China, uh, China's both an adversary, but also a potential partner in the international community if it's following the rules. Governor. Well, first of all, it's not government that makes business successful. It's not government investments that make businesses grow and hire people. Uh, let me also note that the greatest threat that the world faces, the greatest national security threat, is a nuclear Iran. And the idea that has been suggested that I would liquidate the industry, of course not. Of course not. Let's check That's the record. That's the height of silliness. Let, let, I have let's never check, said I would, I would liquidate the industry. Governor, I want to the keep the industry Detroit, going don't and forget. thriving. And, and that's why I have the kind of commitment to make sure that our industries in this country can compete and be successful. We in this country can compete successfully with anyone in the world. The world has really come to vilify the United States. And it is because we pull the trigger first and then pick up the pieces later. Let's stop with our military interventions. Let's recognize that the biggest threat to our national security is the fact that we are bankrupt, that we are borrowing and printing money to the tune of 43 cents out of every dollar that we spend. Did we not learn a lesson when it came to Afghanistan and the bankrupting of Russia? Wasn't that due to Afghanistan? We have all these conflicts ongoing, the result of which will be the bankruptcy of the United States. And it's going to be a monetary collapse because there are consequences to continuing to borrow and print money to the tune of 43 cents out of every dollar that we spend. So let's provide ourselves with a strong national defense. Let's stop with the offense. Let's stop with the nation. -building.